Hi. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to all my relatives. Hi everybody. It was good seeing and spending time with all of you. I dedicate this episode to all my relatives. One movie review. Martin Scorsese's 10 best movie quotes. I'm Stino Craig. I'm Lee Ayayi. And this is the 58th episode of The, the movie, movie Review Show! <laughs> What is the movie review show? Good question. That's when Steve and I go to our local theater, which is called Red Wing Cinema 8. We watch a random movie, and then we review it. We have a popcorn ring system, 110 popcorn. One popcorn being the worst, and 10 popcorn being the best. Today's movie weighs in at 3 hours and 26 minutes, which is about 14 minutes longer than the average NFL game. And the producer is no stranger to long movies. He's done Goodfellas, Taxi Driver, The Godfather... Uh, and The Departed. And based on real life events for the 1920s, today's movie is almost sure to be a Best Picture nominee. And it's Killers of the Flower Moon. And here's a trailer. Whose land is this? My land. Well, 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 our war hero has arrived. You made a good choice coming back here. Those days are the finest, wealthiest, and most beautiful people on God's earth. They outsmart everybody. They have the say. Who gets the oil? Son, I got a question. You like women? <laughs> That's my weakness. <laughs> well, we mix these families together, and that estate money flows the right direction. It'll come to us. Shomikasi. That's how you are. I don't know what you said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> Why did you come here? I work with my uncle. You scared of him? Oh, he's a he's the nicest man in the world. The old sage. The time is over. We got to take back control of our home. I was sent down from Washington, D.C. to see about these murders. We have so many deaths, we've lost count. It's just bad luck. Seems more like an epidemic than bad luck to me. Osage is dying by the enemy. Do not let them die alone. Evil surrounds my heart. You gotta pick a side. I don't even know if you love me anymore. Of course I love you. Then kill these men who killed my family. Did your wife say who she was most afraid of? Don't do something you're gonna regret for the rest of your life. Got nothing but regret. It's review time. The movie begins with hands holding a pipe, an Osage Indian speaking, oil erupting from the ground. Yes, it's perfect intro into the uh, the Indian culture that you're going to be. Uh, absorbed in for the next three and a half hours so <laughs> the story takes place at the turn of the 20th century when the osage nation became wealthy overnight from oil and how white men came stole, stole from and murdered them for their money what does the title killers of the flower moon mean a flower moon was a term taken from the old farmer's almanac the flower moon takes place in the month of may which is when the Reign of Terror started in 1921, with the discovery of the body of an Osage Native American woman. The month of May also sees the blooming of flowers in North America. Once bigger plants begin to grow, they take over and use up all the water and light. This occurrence in nature mirrors what happened under the flower moons in the 1920s, with the people of the Osage Nation having their lives and resources taken from them by white interlopers. Simply put, this movie is about greed. 
Yeah, it reminds me of there will be blood. You know, it's the oil, it's discovery of oil, and how money and wealth corrupts. It's a similar theme in this one. Two problems I had with the movie that took me out of it. One, the music would sometimes fit the time period and sometimes not. The other was that for the most part, all the Osage Indians spoke perfect English, not even an accent. Yeah, like we discussed earlier, there's a happy medium somewhere. I mean, make it gritty enough so it sounds like not perfect English, but not so bad that we can't understand what they're saying. So, I mean, it could have worked a little harder to make that I think the work. interactions with people would have been different if they had trouble, more trouble communicating. Yeah, it would have been more deliberate and slower and, you know, make sure we're all on the same page kind of deal. The subject of God... Heaven and goodness are a part of this movie. Four possible statements dealing with this in the movie are, I'm going the other way for a while. Narrow is the way, which I thought is referring to uh, the straight and narrow path to heaven. I'm in my right way now, and my soul's clean now, Molly. Yeah, it's Indian, or the American natives in general are very spiritual people, so yeah, this movie reflected that so um and uh Sparzati does a good job of using nature too like you know the flower moon and the harvest to uh portray his themes or whatever you want to say so yeah very poetically done i thought uh there was a scene in the movie that i thought was pretty cool um one of the uh, uh osage women dies and uh, she gets up from the from where she's laying and she walks off with like three people that are probably her relatives and then it goes back to her and she's laying there dead so that was an afterlife scene and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, they did that very well. Um, definite spoiler here I didn't like the ending. Uh, the movie ends with an episode of a radio show, the kind where they make all the sounds and the director Martin Scorsese um, narrates what happened to all the characters. Uh, this movie was 3 hours and 26 minutes long. He should have cut out some parts and showed how everything ended. Um, to me, the radio show looked like hell. Um, was that on purpose or was that just my interpretation? Yeah, that's definitely what he was trying to get across. The, uh, the principles of all you know the crimes shown in the movie would spend eternity in hell. That's what he was getting, trying to get across. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But... I guess a, uh, it's a shortcut. Instead of showing us what happened, he told us. So it's kind of um, not the best storytelling method. If he would have, like we discussed, did a better job of editing the movie and cut some parts by about an hour, he would have had time to show that. You know, the ending would have been more impactful than it was. So. Yeah, I found that disappointing. It's like you've been watching this really, really long movie, and then the ending is just him telling you what happened. So, yeah, that's what happens when you make a movie that's too long. It's like, well, we got to wrap this up in a hurry, so what's the fastest way to do it? Well, the fastest way is just do something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think this movie should have been two and a half hours. I think that would have been the sweet spot. Uh, not three hours and 26 minutes. Um, in my opinion, there wasn't enough material to warrant that length. Right, yeah, but an hour too long, I would say. It was a pet peeve of Scorsese. <laughs> Obviously, mm-hmm. this project was. So. Anyway. Okay, next we're going to share our scores. All right, in this movie, Scorsese gives us an epic that's a little too epic. The set pieces, wardrobes, and cinematography, while all stellar, the movie is about 60 minutes too long. And so the result is an intriguing cinematic buffet that, despite being too much, still feels good to be gorged on. I give it eight and a half kernels. Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, and Lily Glanzo's acting were excellent. It didn't need to be 3 hours and 26 minutes long, though. I'm glad I saw it. It wasn't a perfect movie, but I thought it was a good movie. I give it an 8. Next, we're going to show our scores, and then look up Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, and see how close their scores are to ours. Okay, we're looking up Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. The so Mayo is 92%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the audience score is 87%. I had a few in the scores were going to be high. I, I, I 
figured already people were going to like the movie. I figured critics would like the movie definitely because it's Martin Scorsese and they're going to see something bad about Martin Scorsese movie. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yep. That's about what I would have guessed. Well, we were fairly close. Mm-hmm. That's why the audience score. Uh, well, next we're going to look up Metacritic. Okay, before we look, I have a feeling that the Metacritic score is going to be lower than the Rotten Tomato meter was. Um, what do you think? Yeah, probably about 2,000 points, I guess. Okay, ready? Yeah. Ooh, 90% for the um, meta, uh, meta score and 8.1 for oh, wow. the yeah. user score. So, oh, boy. A little bit lower, right? A little bit. Yeah. Not as low as I thought, but... Right, right. I, I thought it was going to be a little lower, too, so... Yeah, it's, uh, I had some issues, but I know people cut him slack as he's who he is. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's what pretty much boils down to. We'll give him a pass on something. Well, next is something new. Lee's going to do 10... Best Martin Scorsese's from the Martin Scorsese movies. Cool. Yeah. So here we go. Yep. All right, I'm going to do 10 quotes from the best uh, Martin Scorsese movies. Okay, number one. The point I'm trying to make with John Lennon is that a man can look at anything and make something out of it. For example, I look at you and say, hmm, what could I do with you? That's from The Departed, that Jack Nicholson character. Cool. Second one. This is the opening line of Goodfellas. For as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a gangster, even more than the President of the United States. To be a gangster was to own the world. That's a cool quote. I remember that line. Yep. Number three. Personnel uh, personnel officer. How's your driving record? Travis Bickle. Clean. Real clean. Just like my conscience. From the taxi driver. Number four, Tommy, are we in Arizona yet? Alice, if you ask me that one more time, I'm going to beat you to death. Just sit back and enjoy life, huh? Tommy, life is short, Alice. So are you. That's from Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Oh, I've never seen that. I haven't either. Um, Number five, it's funny being taken under the wing of a dragon. It's warmer than you'd think. Leonardo DiCaprio and Gangs of New York. Hmm, I've never seen that one either. Yeah, I haven't either. No, I want to. This is also from Gangs of New York. When you kill a king, you don't ki- stab him in the dark. You kill him in front of the court for everyone to see. Ooh. Number seven. Also from The Departed. One of us had to die. With me, it tends to be the other guy. <laughs> Frank Costello. Uh. Number eight. From the color of money. This is Paul Newman talking to um, Tom Cruise's character. Says, Kid, you gotta have two things. You gotta, you gotta have brains and you gotta have balls. You got too much of one and not enough of the other. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Number nine. Oh yeah, also from the departed, Frank Costello again. I don't want to be a part I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want the environment to be a product of me. Hmm. And the last one from Casino, Robert De Niro is Ace Watterson. Back home they have me put in jail for what I'm doing. Hmm, what was he doing? All kinds of nefarious things in the gambling world in Casino. Oh, why did back home he be arrested? What's that? Why would he arrest, be, be arrested back home? Not well, back home he's he, he's committing all these crimes in order to make more money for the casino. Oh, you're saying back home he would have been arrested for yeah. those things. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that's all I got. Well, thank you all for watching. At the end of the show, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as always, we'll, we'll be, be watching, watching for you. you.